Hi, I'm Margaret Lewin and welcome to Margaret Lewin Quilting. Today, I'd like to share with you this absolutely, what I think, is an adorable top. I actually made this yesterday. It's made, I got notes here, it's made out of Robert Kaufman's um, chalk and charcoal line. I'll come up close so that you can see the fabric a little bit better. It is what I think, there it's a good shot of it. It's absolutely adorable. It is so comfortable. I can move my arms freely, so it's great to use with the long arm. It's not real long. I don't know if you can see it or not. It comes just to my hip is where it is. This is the longer length, and then there's a short length, which comes, I would say, maybe about to here, just above the hip. It is a pattern by Indigo Junction. This is the pattern. And the name of it is Raglan Top. I believe it's part of their Indigo Essentials patterns. Just absolutely adorable. It's got, you know, that almost three-quarter sleeve so that your arms, your sleeves don't get in your way when you're sewing. It just, to me, I thought it was absolutely adorable. And I am so happy with how it came out. It took me maybe about five hours to make it. Never made the pattern before. There's a couple of things that I probably would change or will change when I make it the next time. Pattern directions are easy to follow through. And if you'd like to see exactly how I made this, stick around and I'll show you how I did. So this is what we're making. It is called, let me get it out of here. It's a pattern by Indigo Junction and it's called Raglan Top. And the pattern number is IJ1167E. One of the reasons why I really like this as our first top to make together is because I love three quarter sleeves and this is my arms are pretty short and because I'm always sewing or doing things with my hands, whether I got my hands in dishes or in things out in the studio, I've always got something going on. The second reason why I really liked it is because I can potentially play around with the bodice of the top. So those of us that are a little bit chesty, we can, or at least I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna make an adjustment on this. And for those people that are quite tiny, they can make an adjustment here and through the neckline. So those were some things that I really liked about it. The other thing that I liked is it's modest. It has a high collar on it. And that's something that I strive to come up with. So what I've done is I've cut mine out. Now how I cut mine out was I did my top piece, this, an extra large. I did my bands and my arms a large. So what that's going to do, I believe, is compensate to give me some extra fabric through here. And what I'm, why I cut this out as a large is because I really need the smaller sizing in the shoulders. So the very first thing that we need to do on this pattern once we've gotten it cut out is we need to gather up the top of it. So I'm going to pull my two top pieces out and I have set up my sewing machine. Let's get my two top pieces out. So here they are. I'm going to set these aside because I'm not quite ready for those. So here's my two top pieces. I've got one of them here. They were both put on the fold. Now what we've got here are notches. Those notches are where we're going to be sewing our um, gathering stitches. So I'm going to sew from one notch around to the other. The pattern will tell you exactly how far to sew. And what I'm going to do is increase my stitch length so that I can gather that fabric up as I go. I'm gonna do that both to the front and to the back of my shirt. And then we'll go on to the next part of the pattern. I'm really hoping you can see this because what I did was I'm using black thread. And if you look, on the fabric itself, it really is difficult to see. But on the back side, I think you can see it. 
Um, the instructions do tell you to sew two lines of basting stitches. I did three lines. Um, they're just as an extra precaution. That was really the only reason. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my straight pins and I'm going to just weave it in and out of the fabric here. Just in and out, real simple. Then I'm going to take my bobbin thread, because remember I'm working on the back side, and I'm just going to do a figure eight around the needle just to secure this side. Then the next thing I'm going to do is pick up just my bobbin threads on the other side, and I'm just going to, I'm holding my bobbin threads here, I'm going to take my first finger and my thumb, and I'm just going to gradually, slowly gather this up. And you can see, it. at first it looks like it's barely doing anything, but it really is. So I'm just going to gather this, and what I'm trying to do is just very evenly distribute the gathers across the front. Because you don't want it like it is right now with a whole bunch of gathers here and a whole bunch here and relatively flat there. So I'm just going to continue to gather them up. What I think, just by looking at it, is an even amount and distributed and about what we're going to need on the front of the top. So I'm almost there. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing to the back. Because that's what the directions are telling me to do. Now remember, I sized this up. So I'm going to have to be a little bit aware of that when I go to sew my shoulder seam. The um, Where's my picture? I'm going to need to be aware of that when I go to sew this collar piece on. Because my collar piece is cut in a large and my... Um, shirt itself is caught is in an extra large all right so i think that looks good at this stage so i'm just going to take another pin because i really don't want to lose these and i'm going to thread it through on the other side and i'm just going to do another figure eight with it just because what that will do is keep it really intact and it won't move a lot now at this point, if I feel like I need to distribute it more, I can just take my fingers and just move it around and it will distribute it based on where I'm telling it to go. So there's one side, here's the other side. Make sure you check both sides to make sure that you like the way it's looking. Right this second, I'm okay with this. I have a feeling that I'm gonna have to do some more um, gathering once I start putting the pieces together. So this is the front of my shirt. I'm going to now do the back and then we'll come back for the next step. All right, so I've done that. They're done on both the front and the back. The directions indicate that the next thing that we're supposed to do is sew our front and back together. So I'm just going to take them. I'm going to lay them down one on top of the other. And for this one, I am just, this is going to be an everyday shirt. So I'm not going to worry about doing really, really fancy seams. So I'm just going to line the two of them up and following my directions. Oh, wait a minute. I better go back a second. Before we go on to the next step, I wanted to let you know that when I did my basting stitches, I did turn my stitch length all the way up to four on my sewing machine. So they are quite large stitches that make it a little bit easier. The next step of what we need to do is we need to sew up our front and back together. Now, we could do really neat French seams. We could serge it. We could do a bunch of different things. But what I'm going to do on this one, being our very first project, I'm going to show you how you can finish off your seams nicely when you don't own a serger because a lot of people don't have them. So according to the directions, I'm going to sew up both sides of my top first. Then once I've done that, I'm going to then come show you how we're going to finish off these seams. Do pay attention to two things. Make sure that you've turned your stitch length back down 
and make certain that you sew this with the correct seam allowance. Um, garment sewing lots of times tends to be different than quilting. As quilters, we're used to quarter inch seams and on this one, the whole thing is not made with quarter inch seams. So we've got to pay attention to that. So I'm going to double check exactly where my seams need to be. I'm going to pin these and I'll show you how I'm going to pin them. I'm just going to do a couple in and out. This is a lightweight cotton. So I'm just going to pin this all the way down so that it matches. I'm going to lay it flat for a minute to do it only because that tends to be a little bit easier. And then I'm going to stitch both sides. I'll come back once I've stitched both sides and show you the next step. Okay. So we'll be back in just a few minutes. Two seams are sewn. Here's one of them. And here's the other one. The directions did tell me to press it open. So I can't finish these seams off quite yet, but I have pressed them the way they told me to. I figured first time through, I better follow the, follow the directions and not make any changes to them, which I do have a tendency to do. So next I'm going to set this piece aside because the next thing we need to start working on are our sleeves. Now this shirt, this top has what's called a raglan sleeve and it actually is a two piece sleeve. So I don't know if you've ever sewn one before, but they look uh, more complicated than what they really are. So what the directions are telling me I need to do is I need to pin the shirt front and the shirt back. Um, wait a minute, nope. Next thing I need to do is we need to take our two sleeves and we need to put those together per the directions. So that's actually what I'm going to do. I've got my sleeve top and or my sleeve front and my sleeve back. So I'm going to get those two put together based on what the directions are telling me. And then I will be back to actually show you the next step. Just don't forget when you sew these together, you're going to do right sides together and make certain that you are sewing with the correct seam allowance. On the very first page of our directions, it tells you what your seam allowance needs to be. And it really is just a standard sewing um, garment seam allowance. So I'm going to take these two pieces, these off. I know that this is my front because there's only one little notch in it. And this is my back because there's two notches in it. In the sewing community, the back of garments always have a double notch. So there's a little, a little tip for you so that you know that. So I've taken my front and my back pattern piece off. And again, I know this is my back. So I'm going to go to one piece and this is my front. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to just lay these down together. I'm going to match up my notches and I'm going to sew my seam here and I'm going to sew my seam here. And you do see that there is a difference in the size. That's okay. Don't worry about that. What that's doing is really giving us room for our elbows. No big deal. So I'm going to match up these sides. Then I'm going to take and I'm going to match up these sides. I'm going to sew my two sleeves together and then we're actually going to hem it already. So we're going to get it hemmed right away before we put it on our shirt. I know it's going to be hard for you to tell, but I've already sewn this sleeve. So the first thing that I did was I sewed it together the way they told us so that I sewed the front in the back together. They told us to again press our seams open, which I did. Then they have us fold over the bottom of the sleeve and then fold it over again inside and top stitch it. So what I like to do, it's one of the easiest ways for me to do it, is I measure it at seams, at both the seams, So and I stick a pin in it. So there's one seam. And then I take the other side. Now this is not I do this before I press it. Then I take the other seam 
and I put a pin right near that seam measuring to make sure that I folded it under the correct amount. Then I take and just fold it in half at the seams. And what happens is this internal folds right over onto itself and then I can press it down. Then once I've done that, I just take and slide it under and back and put a pin in it. Now you can do it however you want to. I gotta turn it to get the pin in it though. It's up to you. I just find that's the easiest way for me to get my seams in the way I need to. So again, I take it, it's been pressed once, and I just roll this right under and then back, pinch it, put a pin in it, and then that's ready for me to just top stitch it down. And when I go to top stitch it, I just stitched it as close to here as I possibly could so that it was a nice clean seam. Now I'm using Aurifil's black thread on this project and you can see that it's really disappearing very, very nicely. So make sure that if you're gonna... So one of the things you might wanna pick up when you are grabbing your fabric for this project is thread for it. Now if you're gonna use the same fabric that I used, I will make sure that the Aurifil black thread is also available so that I can add it right in with your, with your little kit so that you've got everything that you need to make your top. So here I go, I've got one more place really to pin on this side. And again, just rolling it and tucking it, pinching it down, and then putting this pin in it. And you can see my side came out a little bit. I may have to put an extra pin in it over here. Yep, I'm going to have to. Let's get it rolled over. There we go. And now I'm going to put a pin in it. And just over here, and then it will be ready for me to put underneath my presser foot and sew. Now you may want to, if you have a sewing table like I do, you may want to remove that and just use the free arm on your domestic sewing machine. That's completely up to you. So I'm going to sew this down and then we're going to move on to our next step. I was able to get it in and what I did was I was able to ease all of the excess fabric right into it. So you can see there was no leftover at the top. Okay, I did press it and it does definitely look like I'm gonna need to press it again. But I wanted to show you how I went about doing that on the second arm before I went on to do anything else. So let's stick my sleeve right in there. And again, I'm dealing with the inside base of the sleeve and what I'm doing is inserting it into the bodice of the top okay so the first thing I did and I showed you guys so we were all together when I did that was I took my seam and I matched it at the bottom underneath arm seam and I'm going to put a couple pins in it so that they're there. The next place I need to match is, remember, back of the sleeve to the back of the top, the double notch. I'm gonna stick another pin. Then I'm gonna go up here to the end, right up here at the top, and I'm gonna put a pin in that. All right, then what I was able to do is just take little pieces at a time. I had a lot of pins in it, and I just very slowly eased all of that excess. And there was maybe three-eighths of an inch, maybe half an inch. There wasn't really all that much when I got done. So I'm just going to ease. See, I got little teeny puckers out there, and when I go to sew, I'm just going to hold it 
and I'm just going to slowly stitch. And what I'll be able to do hopefully again is just ease that bulk right into the armhole of my top. Okay. Now on the other side, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to first match up my notch here. Now remember, one notch is the front. Ooh, I'm having a hard time grabbing a pin. Okay. I'm going to pin that in. Then I'm going to match my ends. And again, pin it in. And then I'm going to, again, just kind of work with it a little bit. And I'm going to make it ease into one another. I'm going to put the fuller side, so this side, the, the top front, underneath my presser foot. And I will have the shorter piece on the top. And that will also help me a little bit ease it in. All right. So I'm just going to go top stitch, or just stitch this down. I'll straight stitch it first, then I'll zigzag it. And, um, well, actually, I'll straight stitch it, press it, then I'll zigzag it. And I'll come back and show you what it looks like. And now we move on to the next piece. So I have stitched both my neck and my lining together. The next thing it's telling us to do is to put these at right sides together which I'm doing right this second, pin them, and then sew on this inside. Then once we've sewn the inside, what we have to do after that is we need to clip our edges without cutting through our sewn line. I trimmed this side, I think, too short. I'm having a hard time opening my seam. So um, what we have to do is clip the edges, and then what we're going to do is sew it down again and the reason for that is so that the neckline lays nice and flat so i'm just taking my two seams i'm matching those up right sides together all right i'm going to pin them and then i'll continue to pin all the way around just matching it up then these are two pieces that we actually cut together it's a total of four pieces put together, and um, it's very, very easy to pin these and sew this. And the directions are quite clear on how to do it, so I think you're really not going to have a problem at all. So here we go, or pinning, and then I'll sew it, and I'll come back and show you exactly how I go about clipping, because that's probably one of the scariest parts. Whenever we start cutting things and we're not done sewing, it's it's always a little nerve wracking. So I'll be back once I've sewn this down and I'll show you how I clip it. All right, I've sewn this, see? My two sides are sewn together, right sides together. The next thing I'm gonna do is a whole bunch of clipping. All right, these are a little pair of embroidery scissors that I've got. I'm gonna grab those and I'm just gonna clip all the way around so what you're going to want is a pair of sharp scissors that have a good sharp um point on them where the two pieces come together one of these edges is actually serrated so they they're they're nice for things like this these are not a pair of scissors i use for a lot of things but i do use them for clipping things like this because it it truly does help all right, so you can see I'm doing quite a bit of clipping, but we've got a, a corner there that we've really got to go around. So I'm probably clipping less than, well, definitely less than a quarter of an inch. So um, you're just going to keep clipping. I'm almost at the halfway point. Then once I've finished clipping, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do what's called under stitching, I believe it's called. Yep, under stitching. I'm going to under stitch the collar. Now, to do that, I'll show you in just a second what I'm going to do. In the meantime, I'll be quiet and just concentrate on clipping, and then I'll come back when I'm done clipping. So, I've done all my clipping. The next thing that I'm going to do is what's called under stitching. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this over to my ironing board and I am going to press it. What I'm doing when I press it is I'm going to be pressing everything towards the interfacing. I'm going to press it all the way around right towards the interfacing. And you can see what I'm doing as I finger press it is I am opening it and working it around. And what that does is that top stitch is all of these things to the inside so that it doesn't show on the outside of the neck. You know, you just don't see it. And what it also does is it helps it to lay just a little bit flatter. So I'm just gonna keep finger pressing it. I like to finger press it once. So I go around finger pressing it and then I'll take it over the ironing board and I'll really press it. Then I'm gonna bring it back to the sewing machine and I'm just gonna stitch right here, right next to it, all right? I think I've almost gone all the way around. I just think it, it just helps me when I go over to the pressing table to, um, I just think if I've done it, finger pressed it once, it just helps me. So I like to do that. Okay, so now I'm gonna take it over there. All right, this is gonna look a little funky at this point, but here is, it's backwards to you guys right now. Here is the inside of my collar. So what's going to happen is it's going to end up laying like this. But first what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit at my sewing machine and I'm just going to top stitch right here all the way around. Just making certain that my piece is nice and flat as I go around it. Okay. All right. So I've top stitched or I've stitched it all the way around. This is on the inside. So the next thing I'm gonna do, whoops, is I'm just gonna take these, I'm gonna go over to my pressing table, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to press it down, and once I've pressed it down, I'm going to top stitch it right next to the edge, okay? And then my yoke will be done. Here is my shirt yoke. So it, this is the front of it. This is the back of it. And if I move it up to the shoulder seams, it lays about like this. So it, actually that's pretty good. I, I'm very pleased with the way it's come out. So the next thing that I need to do is I need to attach it to the rest of my shirt. Now, how it's telling me to do is, is it's telling me to use the lining, not the lining. I need the lining piece, which is this, to be free. So I'm to match the notches right sides together on the front and back of both. So what I'm going to do is turn this one right side out. Right, I'm going to put it like this so that I can... Let me get my back side to my back. Hang on. All right. So I've got the front or the back of my shirt right here. And now the back of my yoke. And what I'm going to be doing is matching these seams. Now, I can see already, and I hope you can see, that I need to gather this a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is match my notches first because that always comes first, get those notches matched. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my bobbin thread, which is on the inside of my shirt, it's right here, to pull up that gap. So what I'll do is I'll match my notches all the way around. So I'm going to keep coming right around to the side. And we are working with a curve, so you may need a lot of pins. It depends on how much you do and don't like pinning. I don't mind pinning. It doesn't bother me at all. Especially when I'm working on a project that I've never made before. I like to do a lot of pins because to me it gives me that safety, stability of being able to keep everything where I want it to be. I'm going to match up my seams right here. 
so that it looks nice on the shoulder. And I know because this dark color, it's tough for you to see it, but the next project that we've got coming up is a much lighter color, and um, I promise you'll be able to see it a little bit better. So I'm gonna mess with this a little bit. So I'm just gonna work around getting this to lay flat and stitching it down, and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like before I finish it off, because I've got some finishing work to do on this. All right, so I'll be back in just a few minutes. I'm gonna gather a little bit more, and I'm gonna keep pinning until I've got it all the way I want it, and then I'll be back. All right, I wanna finish, I've got it all put together, but I wanna finish my inside yoke off somehow. The instructions do tell me to top stitch right here, um, like in the ditch or out right on the edge, really depending upon what you want. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mimic my top stitching there down here. But what I didn't wanna do is I don't want this just kinda hanging. I want it finished off on the inside. So what I'm doing is I'm laying it down and what I'm doing is just rolling this under. And the reason for rolling it under is so that when I go through and I top stitch that down, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna catch it. So that this is what my inside will look like. So I've already tried it on, it fits great. It is very, very comfortable. I can't wait to put it on and show you what it looks like because it really is cute. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna get this top stitch down. Then once I've done that, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna hem it per the directions because they tell you how big of a hem to put in. And then it's gonna be all done. It's that simple. So I will be back as soon as I have finished it. And then you can see what the finished product looks like. I got the collar, the, plat the yoke all sewn in. You can see here's the front and the back. And then what I did was I pressed it and then I turned it under about a quarter of an inch or so so that it would catch it when I stitched right here. Hopefully you can see it. There's a little stitch mark right here going all the way around. So that fastened that down. On my sleeves, I am going to take my pinking shears and pink these so that they don't ravel. Um, it won't take long to do it. I have a feeling I'll end up making this again because it went together so nicely and wait till you see it on me. I think it fits great. So I am going to probably pink these seams and I'm gonna cut these back a little bit more along with I'll pink these so that all my seams are at least pink so that they won't fray anymore. Then I'm gonna show you the bottom of it. On the bottom, they had us fold it up. So I folded it up, then just rolled it under and top stitched it again. No big deal, real simple. So that's how I put this together. I will tell you, it took me probably maybe four hours, five hours to make it and that's from cutting it to finishing it. Um, I wasn't able to work on it consistently today. I worked on a little bit at a time. I started it probably about nine o'clock this morning, 9.30, it's 4.30 now, it's all done. So um, I was really, really happy with how this all went together. So again, this is an indigo junction pattern and I will now let you see what it looks like completely done. Thank you for sticking around all the way to the end and watching my sewing the raglan top. I absolutely am thrilled with the way it came out. I will be making more of these. In the beginning, I told you there's potentially a couple of changes that I will make, and there are, and I'm gonna let you know what they are right now. I have very short arms, so even though this is a three quarter inch sleeve, I may actually shorten the sleeve just a little bit, maybe an inch, that would be it. Because it is a good length, it's just I have short sleeves. When I made this, I made the front and the back of it in an extra large so that I would have a lot of room through the bosom because I am a little extra endowed and I know I need that extra room. 
but yeah, I cut the sleeves and the band, the collar band, in a large. I had no problems easing them in together, and I was concerned that I might have an issue. Had no problems at all. So I will do that again. I did the top, this part in extra large, and this in large, the sleeves in large, everything was fine. A couple of other things that I would do, in the directions, she has you sew your seams, and then just press them open. I next time will sew my seams. I will press them open so that they so that they lay nice. And then what I will do is serge them. Um, my seams on the inside, I'll bring it closer so you can see. See, my seams are not serged. They're still raw. So what I'm going to do on these seams now is I'm going to go in with my pinking shears and trim them so that they don't ravel. It's no big deal. It's just a second step that I'm going to do. Or when you cut yours out, and I could do it on my next one, I could just cut them out with my pinking rotary blade. That would take care of the issue too. So that, that and then I'm trying to think if there was anything else. Oh, the other thing is on the inside band, what I will do the next time is I actually will hem the bottom part of it first before I put it all together and put it on the shirt and then afterwards go ahead and do the top stitching. And the reason why I'll do that is there were a couple spots that it was not perfectly rounded. It's on the inside. Nobody's going to see it but me. But I would like it to be just finished off just a little bit nicer. Other than that, I cannot say enough at how great the instructions were. The instructions were great. There's not a lot of pieces to it. It went together in no time flat. Another thing that I will make for notes on this is I would actually like to lengthen it. So I would probably add, I would say, a good 8 to 10 inches on it. Because I think if I took and put a belt with it, what do you think? If I put a belt with it, I think it would make an adorable spring dress. So I'm thinking about that. The other thing I thought I could do is maybe add another maybe two inches to it and then I could wear it with my leggings and not be conscious of my um and just not be conscious you know what I'm thinking about so those are the only things there would be no changes to the pattern itself I love the cut of it it has these nice raglan sleeves so it has a two-part sleeve and because of that it just rolls really nice on my shoulders and I have pretty narrow shoulders, so I'm, I am just thrilled with the way it came out. So if you'd like to make your, let's see what it's called again. If you'd like to make your very own raglan top out of this Kaufman, Robert Kaufman fabric, go on over to my website. I've got the pattern available and I've got fabric kits to go with the pattern. So I just think it's adorable. I hope you're liking it too. If there's a specific garment you would like me to make and show you how to do it, just leave it in the comments below and I will absolutely take a look at that pattern and see what I can do for you. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're having a fantastic Friday and I'll see you again soon. Bye.